What's up guys? We're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about diet breaks. But first, make sure, like, subscribe, comment, algorithm, you know the drill. A new study was published out of Bill Campbell's lab with some pretty big collaborators. Shout out to our team BioLane coach, David Mathis, who was on this paper, and also Eric Trexler, another researcher in exercise and nutrition who I published with previously. So this study was looking at six weeks of dieting, specifically in females, using either a continuous dieting approach or what was termed an intermittent approach, but basically the way they did it was two weeks of diet, a week diet break, two weeks of diet, a week diet break. And they were looking at how much fat they lost, fat-free mass changes, changes in metabolic rate, changes in strength. They did different food questionnaires, uh, including measuring things like disinhibition and satiety and those sorts of things. What was cool about this study is they really equated a lot of variables that I think were important which doesn't surprise me because Bill Campbell is a great researcher. Bill is my partner in Physique Coaching Academy. And one of the reasons I brought him in as a partner is because Bill really gets it when it comes to research design and how to answer questions appropriately. One of the things that was very important was they equated calories. So over the six week time period, the group doing the diet breaks had to go lower their, during their diet weeks since during their non-diet weeks, the participants were eating at maintenance whereas the continuous dieting group just ate the same amount of calories every single day over the six week time period. But they made sure that the total calories weren't different over that time period. And they equated protein intake, carbohydrate intake, fat intake, and they equated training volume. So they really did a great job at controlling the variables that were very important for this study. Diet breaks got a lot of hype about five years ago and I participated in that because there was a study published uh, called the Matador study where they showed basically over 24 weeks doing a two week diet, two week break, two week diet, two week break, much better results in terms of fat loss, lean mass retention, and they showed a better preservation of metabolic rate during that study. But since then, a few different studies have been published using diet breaks and not really showing the same outcomes. So the results of this study basically showed that there was no differences between the two conditions. So both groups lost the same amount of fat. They had the same amount of fat-free mass. Performance changes were very similar. Pretty much everything was the same, including metabolic rate was no different between the groups. The one difference they did see was that in the continuous dieting group, their disinhibition score went up whereas in the intermittent dieting group, their disinhibition score went down. Now, what is disinhibition? Essentially, it's the likelihood that that person is going to break and overeat or binge eat. When they look at binge eating, a lot of times they'll look at disinhibition scores. So it's interesting that in the intermittent group, disinhibition went down over the course of this diet, even though they were losing weight, whereas in the continuous group, it went up. So this suggests that maybe having those weeks at maintenance help kind of give people a psychological break to where they don't feel so deprived. And higher disinhibition scores are linked to higher BMI and less long-term success on diets, whereas lower disinhibition scores are associated with lower BMI and better long-term success. So what are my takeaways from this study? You basically can do what you want. If you would rather just eat the same thing every day, you can do that. It doesn't seem to be any worse physiologically than utilizing diet breaks. If you like diet breaks, it doesn't seem to be any worse than doing continuous diet. It just means that during your diet weeks, if you wanna diet for the same amount of time as somebody who's doing continuous, you're just gonna to have to be more aggressive during your diet weeks if you want a diet break week. Or if you plan to just go slower, you can put in diet breaks, but it's just gonna extend the duration of the diet. And so it just depends. I like to use diet breaks as a lifestyle intervention so when I'm looking at setting up a diet for somebody, I actually call these fat loss sprints. I look at where is the person home, has access to their normal foods, is not under a ton of stress, and doesn't have a bunch of work-life stuff going on. There's a three-week period here, boom. Let's go hard for that three weeks, and oh, there's a family vacation coming up after that? Cool, we'll go on a diet break for one or two weeks. That way they can enjoy that vacation and still 
kind of hold serve, right? A diet break is just a period of maintenance. Or maybe somebody is doing really well, but then the holidays are here. Okay, well now we're gonna eat at maintenance for the holidays. So you can kind of put these maintenance weeks in or these diet breaks in as it fits your lifestyle. The one thing I will say is a lot of these research studies that have shown no benefit to diet breaks have just done one week diet breaks. The Matador was two weeks in a row. Do I think that matters? Maybe, but I would kind of think that the consensus of the weight of the evidence is that diet breaks don't appear to make a difference in terms of lean mass retention and pr preservation of metabolic rate, but that doesn't mean they're not a useful tool. And I personally use diet breaks, many of my clients use diet breaks, and still love diet breaks. At the end of the day, compliance is the science. Whatever methodology we can use to get people to be the most adherent and most compliant is going to be what produces the best results. And if diet breaks help you achieve that, then they are absolutely useful regardless of whether or not they have physiological benefits. All right, guys, if you're struggling with how to implement diet breaks or really don't know how to do this stuff, I highly recommend checking out one of our team BioLane coaches. Our team BioLane coaches are all trained in the BioLane way. They're all super intelligent and know how to work with people to find what methodologies are gonna produce the best adherence for them as an individual. We have amazing testimonials and really get great feedback about our coaches. So if you're looking for a little bit more one-on-one -on -one support, make sure you check out our team BioLane coaches. Click the link in the description and I think you'll be very, very impressed. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video and I'll catch you next week.